All right, hello to everyone in AED305 who is interested in learning to use Adobe Premiere to produce your Saturday children's art classes videos. And hello to anyone else who is interested in using YouTube videos edited through Premiere for educational purposes. My name is Brendan Coyonis. I'm an art education major at Ball State, and I've been producing these videos for a couple of semesters, or for one or two semesters now, so I've gotten kind of the gist of it. These videos are geared toward art education majors and geared toward 305 teaching. So I'm just showing you the very basics of what matters in this editing software, this powerful editing software for you as education majors. So I'm going to avoid showing you erroneous stuff that is less valuable to you. Um, and I'm just going to show you what matters for making an educational video more engaging. Now, this first video is going to be the very basics of editing the Premiere. Um, in a moment, I'll explain to you the why, the when, the how to use Premiere, uh, storing files, and the best way to manage your data, because these are going to be large video files. Uh, just navigating Premiere itself, importing media into Premiere, which would include images, video clips, and audio files. Um, using the very basic tools of Premiere to cut together a video, which means to edit out the parts that you don't want and to put it all into one final form. To add a title card to introduce yourself, and then exporting your video, which is like exporting something out of Photoshop, and then uploading a video to YouTube. So this is the very bare bones of it. I'm not gonna show you anything more than what you could potentially do in iMovie in this video one of the two video, maybe three video series. So if you know how to already import files, cut out unimportant parts of a video, export, and upload to YouTube, this video you can skip. Um, video two is where I'm gonna go into the more specific tools that make Premiere more powerful than, say, iMovie. Um, and that'll include adding and editing text to be more complex than uh, just one font and that doesn't move. I'm gonna show you how to voice over images. I'm gonna show you how to voice over videos, uh, how to make time lapses with either video and also how to just kind of use time lapses made from your phone's camera function um, because there's two ways to do it, right? You can record yourself in a normal video and then speed up that video or you can record a specific time lapse from your camera's time lapse function. Um, and then I'm gonna show you how to use anchor points much like you would have learned in Art 200 to uh, fade, move, rescale images on screen and to make your videos more engaging. So that's what we'll be in video two. For now, we're gonna stick with video one. Now, the why, when, and how of using Premiere. The thing that makes Premiere better than iMovie or most, if not all, of the free softwares you're gonna see out there is that it has significantly more tools available to you. Those are the tools that we're gonna be talking about in video two. Um, Premiere is different from After Effects, which is the one you would have studied in Art 200, Intro to Computer Art. It's different from After Effects because After Effects is meant for shorter form, more animation style videos. And if you start importing long videos into After Effects, it's gonna lag really badly. So Premiere is meant for actually assembling videos, say in a movie style, where you're importing footage and then cutting out pieces that you don't want um, and kind of mashing different pieces of footage together. So that's why you'd use Premiere. Premiere is the one that I use because I'm most familiar with it because as an art student, I've used Adobe products. And it's also available to you, should be for free, at several locations on campus, such as the AJ235 room, which is the R200 room. You should also have access to it at the library. And I believe that if you wanna purchase it for your own, it, there is a student discount, which you can get access to. But that's how to use it, you know, that is, um, where to access it, etc. If you get to the Art 235 or AJ 235, and you know you're not able to log in, Serena may be able to may be able to help you, but you have access to this video editing software. So now I'm going to navigate away from this page and show you how I would store files for use in Premiere, or really any other video editing software, because they all operate very similarly. Now I'm using right now an external hard drive and a flash drive. I'm storing my videos on this external flash drive. The reason I do this is A, videos take up a lot of storage space that I don't have on my computer, so I store them on a flash drive. But also, B, I keep them all in one folder, all the videos that I'm gonna use, all of the pictures that are gonna show up on screen, every type of file that I'm gonna pull into Premiere or my video editing software, I'm gonna store in one file. That's to make it much, more e much easier to find and 
much less likely that you're going to lose a file. Because Premiere operates a lot like Photoshop, where if a document or file gets moved from the original location on your computer, then Photoshop or Premiere is going to lose that file and it's going to get unlinked. So it do Premiere doesn't actually store any of your videos, it just links to a location in your files where that video is. Um, so I think it's much safer to store everything that you're using in one location on your computer when you're using Premiere or any video editing software. It just makes things easier. So I have this file that has all of the footage that I'm going to potentially use in this sample video that I'm making for you right now. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up Premiere. So this is you know, this is, should be familiar to you. It's the Adobe Start screen. I'm just going to click New Project and I'll go ahead and title it Sample Video. And I can choose the location, which means where that Premiere file is going to be saved, much like where a Photoshop file is going to be saved. And I'm going to save that to the same file that I saved all of my footage. So I have my title, I have my location. All the rest of this does not really matter for our sake right now. We don't care enough about that. So I just click OK. And it just popped up there in my folders. Now this is the actual workplace, workstation, that should pop up. This one may not pop up itself. As you'll notice, there are a number of different tabs up here. These correspond to different layouts that are good for doing different things. So right now, since I'm just assembling a video, I'm just gonna go over to assembly. So when you're in the assembly tab, you can break down this uh, screen into four different locations, okay? Number one is the media palette, so to speak. Um, this is where all of the video footage all of the pictures, all of the audio files that you have imported into Premiere to use will be stored. So as soon as I start importing things, they're gonna be starting to show up here. There's also the timeline down here. Once I upload a video, you're gonna see the timeline actually show up and a video, a video file and an audio file are gonna run on this actual timeline itself. And this is where all of my editing is gonna actually, most of my editing at least, is gonna actually take place. The video that I have as a result of my editing is going to show up right here. So this is what I should be able to watch to actually see the effects of what I'm doing down here. And right here is your actual toolbar. We won't be using all of these tools, but I'll explain more about what each of these, or at least the relevant ones, do as soon as we start editing. But now that you know how to basically navigate this assembly screen at least, I'm going to show you how to import. Now there's two ways to do this. You can either drag and drop, which you should be familiar with with Photoshop. You just drag files from the folder over here into your import media location. Um, but I'm not gonna do that right now. Instead, I'm gonna go to File, Import, and I'm gonna choose the sample video and this image, because we're gonna use both of those. So I'm gonna click Import, and they show up right here. Right now, what I, all I care about is the video footage, which is a two-minute piece of footage that I recorded to show you how to edit down. When you're recording footage, I highly recommend that you record all of your footage, or as much of it as you can, in one clip, rather than pressing record and stopping every time you make a mistake. That's because it's easier to import one piece of footage and then cut it down, rather than having to import a bunch of tiny little files down here and then reorder them once you get in here. No, I much prefer just having one large bulk file, or video clip, rather. So I just drag and drop down onto the timeline. And as I mentioned, you see the actual video itself and the audio. So what this timeline breaks down into is this top half is all video. Um, so anything that's an image or a video will show up on this top half of the timeline. Anything that is audio, be it music, um, any sounds that you include, like sound effects, or your audio that you say record maybe for a voiceover, is going to show down down here. And you can tell the difference between because the audio has uh, more of this sound level recording. But as you can see, when I select one, I'm selecting both. Um, there is a way to unlink those, and I'll show you that right now. I just right click and click unlink, so I can choose just video or just audio and edit those individually. That will only matter later on when we get to video two, but I figured I'd show you that right now, that that is possible. However, um, for convenience sake, I'm gonna keep these together for now.
So now I see my video that's actually showing up in this space right here, and I'm gonna focus for now on my toolbar. The only three tools I'm gonna focus on are the selection tool, which is the one, it's just like your Photoshop selection tool. It allows you to choose stuff, move it around, click on it. Um, also the track select forward tool, which does basically the same thing as the select tool for now, but later on it'll matter more because it allows you to select all of the footage to the right of where you're clicking. So basically any footage forward from the location on the timeline that you click on will be selected. And that's useful when you say cut out a piece of footage right here and need to choose all of the pieces of media that you're gonna bring forward um, to take up the space that you cut out. But that'll make more sense later on. This down here is your razor tool, which you can use to cut up this video and audio or any other media that you have on your timeline. And that matters if you want to take out a piece of your video. Say you make a mistake or you stumble. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So at the beginning of my video, I pressed record and then I went to rest. Let me show you that. You see at the beginning where I took a second to um, press record and then come to rest before I started speaking? Well, I don't want that in my final video, so I'm gonna cut that out. I'm gonna zoom in on this timeline so that I can see the specific section I'm working with. So I wanna cut it just before hello. So that's where I wanna cut it. I'm gonna click on that razor tool and cut exactly on that line. And now you can see that if I press the select tool, I'm selecting these two pieces of footage separately. Well, I don't want this right now, so I'm gonna press the select tool and click delete. And then I'm gonna press the select tool or the track select forward tool and pull all of this media back to the beginning of the video. And that's important so that you don't have a black, awkward black screen at the beginning of the video, like that, for example. So then I just drag this all the way forward. And that's all there is to basic cutting out parts of video and cutting together video in Adobe Premiere. If I want to add more clips of video, all I have to do is drag and drop clips after the end of the footage that I have here. And then I can cut that together as I want. So now what I'm gonna do is go through and cut out all of the pieces of footage that I don't want anywhere where there's awkward pauses in the sample video. And I'm gonna do that on time-lapse for you. So you can just watch or you can skip past this section of the video. But it's the same process repeated. Okay, so now I've gone through and cut out any awkward pauses or moments that I don't want to see in the final video. Um, if you watch the time lapse, you'll see basically my process and how I used each of these different tools, the select, the track select forward, and then the razor tool. Um, so now what I wanna do is add a title card to this video, um, just because that's a part of the basics. So I have an image that I'm gonna have my title card over up here at the top left. Now what I need to do is make room on my timeline for that title card because if I drag and drop it right here right now, it's going to replace all the video footage that I just had um, and I don't want that. Um, I want the video to come in after the title card is done. So I'm going to click the track select forward tool and this is going to select all of the tracks going forward and I'm just going to move these back and make some room. Now I can move back to the select tool, drag in that intro image and so since this intro picture would start to cut into my footage, as you can see there um, at the right of my cursor, I'm gonna place it above my sample video on the timeline track. And then if I want to move this image down to this track, I can just move this footage back to make room, use the select tool to bring it down, and now I have this title card. Now, this card is a bit smaller than the rest of my footage if you look right here comparing and contrasting them. So I'm gonna go back here, click on the image itself, and I'm just gonna bring up its scale 
to fit this entire black box that represents the viewing screen or what is going to be featured on the video screen itself, just so it fills out in that entire black area. Now it's large enough, um, but I'm not sure how long I want it to be. I'm not going to insert any text right now. I'm just looking for the length of the video. So I'm going to press play. Yeah, that definitely seems too long. So I'm going to shorten this up. Um, the select tool has this cool thing where if you choose just to the far right of a video clip, um, you can shorten it. Basically the same thing as using the razor tool. So I'm going to shorten it down to, I don't know, say there. Now let's see how long it is. Still a little long. That's better. So I'm comfortable with that length. Now I'm going to use the track select forward tool to avoid this black space right here that doesn't do anything. So I'm going to drag these clips to my left so that as soon as this intro title card is done, we go right into my footage. Now, we have this picture that my title card is going to go onto, but we don't have the actual text itself. So what I do here is I go to the beginning of the video or wherever I want the text to start coming in and I click on the type tool. And I just click onto my video. So now I've added a graphic uh, onto the actual visuals portion of the timeline. I'm going to type in what I want it to say. Let's see, sample video. And I can use the select tool to move this around some. So I can move it to wherever I want on the screen. But I also want to make sure that it only lasts as long as the picture for the title card because I don't want it bleeding into the clip itself like it just did there. So now this is what my video looks like. And that's good. I'm glad, happy with that one. Um, we'll actually get into editing this text here and changing the size and changing the fonts, etc. in the next video. So for now, I'm going to leave it like this, with this title card that says sample video. And I think I'm happy with the entire video as it is, and I think I've gotten to show you enough so that you can do the very basics of editing in Adobe Premiere. So what I'm going to do next is export this video. Because as I mentioned, um, creating a video in Adobe Premiere doesn't mean that you've actually put together a final video file. Um, let me show you what I mean. This is my project file. This is actually what I'm working on right now. This is not a watchable video file. Sure, you can watch it, but all it really is is just like Photoshop when you've linked different pictures to the, your Photoshop file, and what you need to do is render it into a final product, a one single file that is your final product. Um, in Photoshop, that's called rendering. In Premiere, that's going to be exporting, but also rendering, kind of the same kind of the same vocab word. But anyway, so to export your video, you need to set the video area, so the actual time that the video is exporting. Um, so to do that, you just select the beginning of the video or move this blue cursor all the way left to the beginning of the video and press the I button on your keyboard, and that sets the beginning. And then you scroll all the way to the end of the video to where you want it to cut off, and then you select O. And this area selected in light gray is the export area, and it will not be exporting anything outside of that. So no long black pause at the very end. I'm gonna go to File, Export, Media, and the format, I'm fine with the format of H.264. Um, all of these, I sh you should be fine. Yeah, you should be fine with all of these uh, base settings. Um, I don't think we're going to be too picky in RDEB, so don't go mess with any of that. H.264 is fine, high bit rate's fine. So I'm going to, you can either click Q, and that means that you're going to be exporting through Adobe Media Encoder, which is a little bit more complicated and I don't want to show you right now. Um, but if you're familiar with exporting in a media encoder, you could do it that way, or you can just click export, and it'll export directly from Adobe Premiere. So now that my video is finished exporting, I should be able to go find the video in my files. 
Now, I wasn't very good about noting um, exactly where I was saving it to, but I believe this is the one. All right. And so here's my finished sample video in MP4 format, which means that all of that video footage, all of those, Im any of those images that I was using have all been compressed into one file that you can upload to YouTube, that you can send to people, etc. So it's just like a JPEG when you've exported something from Photoshop, right? If you've made a Photoshop collage before um, that uses a number of different photos, well, this all compresses all of the different photos, all of the different videos into one file. So here it is in MP4 format. And that's all there is to that. Now, I've located that video. I'm going to go ahead and move it. So I went ahead and moved it back to my preferred folder. So I recommend saving this Premiere document just in case you want to go back in and make any more edits. But I'm going to exit out of this for now. So now I have this video file that is usable, um, just like a JPEG image except in video form. I'm going to show you how to upload to YouTube now, and that's going to be the last portion of this video. I'm going to go ahead and open Chrome. Okay, so I've navigated to my homepage on YouTube, and I'm logged in with the account that I'm going to upload onto because you need a YouTube account in order to upload videos. Uh, if you're going to upload YouTube videos longer than 15 minutes, by the way, you need to verify your account, which all that means is you basically go into YouTube Verify and you send a text to yourself. It's not that hard of a process. So you can upload videos longer than 15 minutes, but you just have to figure out how to verify your account. But to upload a video, you go up here to Create, Upload Video, and you'll find yourself at the YouTube Studio. It's already taken me to the Upload window, so all I have to do is click Select Files, find the file that I want to upload for, in this instance, my sample video, and I click open. So now it has the title. I'm just going to keep the title as sample video. You can add a description, and I highly recommend adding a description that tells any more information that you want anybody to know, any references or links you can add in the description. You can upload or select a thumbnail. YouTube offers you a number of thumbnail options that you can choose from. Or you can upload a thumbnail if you have a verified account, just like if you can upload a video longer than 15 minutes if you have a verified account. You could add it to any playlists that you have. For example, if you have an AED305 playlist. And then I recommend for AED305 clicking yes, this video is made for kids. Uh, that does a number of things. It disables the comments and it orients the videos or advertises the videos more toward kids and less toward adults. Um, so it's just safer for young children this screen I normally don't worry about. Um, this is where you can add certain things through YouTube. On this last screen, you can choose the visibility. So you can choose private, unlisted, or public. I'm going to make mine unlisted, which means that only people who I send the link to can actually see the video. Um, I would recommend making yours public just so that anybody can see it. But if you only want people from AED 305 seeing your video, then I'd click unlisted as well. Uh, don't worry about clicking schedule. That doesn't matter. So I click save, and that saves those settings as a YouTube video. And since it was such a short video, it didn't take very long to upload. Here's the video link, and now I'm done. So now I have this video alongside all the rest of mine, and that's all there is to it. I hope this video is helpful in the basics of navigating Premiere. Again, I didn't show you anything in this video that you couldn't do in iMovie, I don't believe. So the next video is where I really show you how to use Adobe Premiere for its benefits, assuming that you already know all the things or have practiced with all the things that I have shown you in this video. For now, I'm going to sign off and I will see you in the next video if you choose to use Premiere for its more complicated features.